In the endless green of the rainforest, a dazzle of color, the distinctive crown of the almendro. And here in the upper canopy, the powerful, unmistakable cry of the great green macaw. These two beauties of the tropics, the almendro tree and the great green macaw, live together in close harmony. But once a year, the almendro offers an additional attraction, a generous feast of the fruit that gives the tree its name, almendros the Spanish word for almonds. And the first guests at the feast are the great green macaws. The macaws, or lapas verdes, as they are known in Costa Rica, arrive early, before the almond fruits are fully ripe, and are able to gorge themselves without competition from other animals. Uninterested in the outer pulp, the macaw uses its strong beak to break through the tough inner husk and get to its favorite delicacy, almond kernel. Even so, the lapas verdes are choosy eaters. Of all the fruit they pick, only a third is consumed. The rejects fall to the forest floor to become food for the ground dwellers. The almendro offers privacy only in its upper level, high above most other trees. Where a branch breaks off, a hole is left behind, creating a convenient, spacious nursery. Most macaw couples are regulars. They pair up for life, returning year after year to breed at the same nest hole. The newly hatched chicks must be fed every two hours and it'll take about 90 days before they develop the splendid plumage of their parents and are ready for their first flight. Until then, the almendro nest holes, some up to a meter in depth, provide the vulnerable chicks with shelter from the wind and weather. Even in the tropics, protection from the elements is essential. There are two main seasons in northeastern Costa Rica the very rainy wet season and the so-called dry season when the rain occasionally pauses. Leaves and bromeliads capture most of the deluge. Only a relatively small amount reaches the forest floor. The pace of deforestation is reflected in the alarmingly rapid disappearance of the green macaw. These distinctive birds were once a common sight throughout the northern zone, but now their distribution has been reduced by 90%. Yet a striking number of almendros still remain. Now stranded on open grassland, these solitary giants survived the first wave of felling because the old saws were no match for their hard wood. And surprisingly, these isolated trees are now popular hatcheries for the macaws. It may be that the continuing destruction of the forest has forced the macaws to set up home here. But few of their natural predators can approach the nests across a wide open field. So perhaps the macaws nest here because the young birds are safer. The young, non-breeding pairs and adolescent birds gather and playfully squabble in the palm trees, their favorite nighttime accommodation. Even the toucan has to give way.
Although macaws are extremely sociable, they prefer a certain amount of privacy at night. A bird will only allow its partner to sleep in the same palm tree. Birds who have the luxury of an almendro nest hole spend the night there, watching over their youngsters. The spectacle of the sunset lasts only a few minutes in the tropics. As the dawn chorus reaches a crescendo, the morning light restores color to the land. And in the almendro tree, another busy day has already begun. A pair of crimson-fronted parakeets are setting up home next door to the macaws. All parrot species are sociable and fond of play and experimentation. The hard-working macaw parents have survived the worst. Now their offspring must be fed only three times a day. The young bird's transformation is remarkable. Even the macaw's most distinguishing feature, the red forehead, is already fully developed. It seems this year's brood of Lapas Verdes will soon be ready to fly. The young macaws are still at home, unable to leave the nest as heavy rainfall and strong winds have delayed their first flight. This is one of the last pre-digested meals of almendro kernels that the young will receive at the nest. It'll take at least two years of parental training before they're fully independent, but soon they will start finding food for themselves. If the rain ever stops. On a nearby bromeliad, a grasshopper tries to escape the downpour. But the shelter is already taken by a rusty wandering spider. Hundreds of thousands of hair-like sensors cover its body and are highly sensitive to changes in air currents, even in a rainstorm. The victim is dispatched with a poisonous bite and sucked dry. As soon as the rain stops, the macaws emerge to drink at their freshly filled bromeliad. But this is one of the last times the family will be together at the Almendro this year. The young Lapas Verdes are ready to fly. Though some may need more than a little encouragement. Parents urge their offspring to take to the air.